Hello, my name is Jason Moore. I'll be your primary instructor uh, this year for the Multibody Dynamics B course. This is the opening video where I'll give a bit of an introduction. Um, I'll show you where you can find the resources you need, uh, tell you a little bit about what Multibody Dynamics is, and give an example of what you will be able to do by the, by the time you finish the course. Um, I'll switch to these slides. So this is uh, the second time I've given the course, and this is for the 2022-2023 academic year. Um, oops, right screen. So like I said, I'm the primary instructor, um, and you're gonna meet some other co-instructors too during the work sessions and, uh, and online. Uh, we've got uh, Walter, Rosanna and Domas are all uh, co-instructors, and then we've got three teaching assistants, Timo, Robert, and uh, Eon Lee. Owen Lee, sorry for mispronouncing the name. Um, so you'll meet them in the work sessions, and uh, they'll get to introduce themselves. I'll tell you a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in the USA and spent uh, a good portion of my career there, but two years ago I moved here to TU Delft uh, to work in the biomechanical engineering department, and I run the TU Delft Bicycle Lab. So I think primarily about how people balance and control and power bicycles, and uh, I do it from uh, a dynamics and human control perspective, but I also uh, look into sports uh, with respect to cycling and uh, how we can improve performance there. So if you have any interest in MSC projects uh, related to these topics, come and talk to me and you'll, I'm sure, hear a bit more about it as we move forward in the class. I teach this course and also the sports engineering, uh, special topics in, in sports engineering, which you can sign up for now too, if, if that interests you. So what is multibody dynamics? I've got here that it's the study of the dynamic behavior of interconnected rigid or flexible bodies, each of which may undergo large translational and rotational displacements. So we're talking about um, bodies that are moving in, our, in the macro world, like me and you, a spacecraft, a vehicle, even planets, all the way down to even the molecular world, which I'll show some examples of. Um, and these make large displacements. They can move and rotate, do uh, full uh, rotations, etc. And they may be connected to each other. So we need to figure out, try to predict how those things move. Um, this is a list of ways that I've, some of the ways I've used multibody dynamics in my research and career. So as I mentioned, I study bicycles, so I think about the vehicle dynamics a lot. I work also in the biomechanics of the human himself. Uh, riding bicycles and uh, other vehicles too. I've worked on lower limb walking and running. I've done rowing uh, studies, standing balancing studies. Um, thought about inertial measurement dynamics and uh, I've got a couple projects right now too in skiing and skateboarding. So all of these involve, involve large motion and if you think about the person and the vehicle um, they are a collection of rigid and flexible bodies that move, rotate, and we try to understand that motion. So I like this um, diagram to try to think about how this all fits together. Um, this was inspired by my colleague, Alan Downey, uh, and I've modified it a bit, but if we look at the real world, and I'll take the bicycle once again as an example, we've got some kind of vehicle here that has motion, and then a person that has motion and uh, they control this vehicle to make it uh, do uh, advanced things like uh, single trap mountain biking or just riding uh, to work each day. So that motion um, is what's going on. We want to understand that motion. If we look uh, down uh, to the measurements block, we can put sensors on this and we can measure uh, uh, position measurements, we can measure rotations, um, accelerations, all kinds of different things that give us, as a function of time, how a system like this moves in the real world. And then if I move to the right, I can think about the modeling aspect, and that's primarily what we're going to be learning in this course. So we're going to think about how to make an abstraction of the real world. We're going to describe these uh, systems in terms of 
first a free body diagram where we can understand how the forces are acting on the system, how it may or may not be able to move, what the geometry and the configuration and the motion uh, can possibly be. Once we have an understanding of that, that will let us transcribe that into some kind of mathematical model. In general, this is going to be a set of uh, differential equations or differential algebraic equations that govern how the motion of this uh, abstraction that we've made of, real, of the real world changes in time. These can be mathematical models can be used um, alone and by themselves if uh, on pencil and paper if they're simple enough. But we typically have to move to a computational model to handle anything of any complexity. So we also then do another transcription to the computational model and we exercise that computational model to do some analysis of that. And this is where we can predict what uh, motion might happen and how uh, and try to understand better um, how different elements of the model, the geometry, the control, etc., will make different motions. So once we get to that, there's then this bottom line called the validation connection. Can we then ensure that these predictions of the real world actually measure, uh, match the measurements of the real world? And uh, this sort of circle here uh, gives an idea of um, what we're trying to do here. And on the right, like I said, we'll, that gray box is primarily what we'll be doing in this class, uh, but we will be doing some analysis and, and, and simulation too as we move forward. So what can you do with multi dynamics? I'll just show a few examples here in uh, terms of video. So I'm in the biomechanics department and we study uh, the motion of humans. Um, you may have taken Professor Seth's class. Right? This is an open sim simulation of a runner. Each of the uh, skeletal elements of this body are uh, modeled as rigid bodies and we have to use multi dynamics to understand how they can move under the forces of the different muscles present. On the right, I have uh, some motion capture of no-handed riding and balancing on a bicycle that I did in the study. Um, so here uh, we look into um, how a rider can control and manipulate this bike and understanding the uh, motion here involves a lot of the principles uh, of dynamics and kinematics that you'll learn in this class. Uh, spacecraft is another topic. Um, the Explorer 1 was a spacecraft that uh, ended up destabilizing and uh, ultimately not doing its job and crashing. Um, so these are some simulations uh, that uh, Professor Levinson, who was a co-author of the course textbook, um, showed of the destabilization of the destabilization of this uh, rocket and some of the basic principles that you'll learn in this class can help understand why that might have happened you can't see it very well but there's like um, these antenna uh, elements that uh, came out of the side of the craft uh, causing a uh, change in the principal axes of the vehicle uh, ultimately making it destabilize which is not good um, this is an example of a sort of origami um, spacecraft solar panel deployment. Um, this motion of these panels is something that we could model and predict and try to design for to make sure that the forces um, are not too high uh, and everything moves as we expect. So spacecraft dynamics. You've of course seen um, the Boston Dynamics robots, Atlas, the most impressive. This is a year old video now. Um, there's been a more recent one with even more impressive jumps. But uh, these robots like this start with uh, modeling and simulation based on multi-body dynamics. We first have to have some kind of model that represents the, uh, in this case, rigid and some flexible elements, uh, likely two, uh, to be able to simulate and test the system before we bring it to a real robot 
etc. So this is the gazebo simulation system that many people uh, that has a uh, you can download and use this Atlas model and then figure out how to make him walk. Uh, but that model itself is a multi-body dynamics model. Other examples of robotics. Oops, if they all play. And it doesn't look like it wants to play. Am I not in the right? Hmm. Sorry. Here we go. This is the MIT Cheetah. Um, uh, this video shows some examples of it uh, running and jumping over obstacles. Let me find a good spot to play it right here. So this is one version of their uh, model, but uh, they also have multi-body dynamics models that predict the motion of uh, this robot and use those to help them design the control algorithms uh, to make it jump. On the right is a pretty cool little robot. It's a, uh, a jumping robot that uh, tries to jump quite high for its size and mass and uh, uses some basic principles and uh, spring elements, etc., to to be able to jump, jump off walls. So we can model that you know, uh, and figure out how to optimize and make something like that work in this class. Um, I do sports biomechanics too. Here's another open sim simulation of a baseball pitch optimization. All right, so we uh, this starts with a multi-body dynamics model, and then um, we can analyze motion. Um, so we have a I don't know why these videos always change, but we have a, a a lab similar to this here at TU Delft. Start at 3:04. This is a, an example of motion capture of a long jump, so all of these cameras are tracking positional, uh, the position of different markers on this woman's body as she does the, does the long jump there. Um, using that data of the positional motion and then mapping it to the skeletal uh, bodies can help us understand um, what kind of forces uh, are used to launch the body, what, how can we optimize that and improve performance. Uh, Etc. Here's a cool example of a, uh, a little self-balancing um, bicycle robot. Um, so it has a controller here that can manage the stabilization of the vehicle while the, uh, a person controls the directional control with a, uh, an RC um, radio. And uh, to be able to pull this off, having a, a dynamic model so you can design a controller around it uh, and eventually get it into the robot is also necessarily, and we do a lot of that in the bike lab ourselves. There's a lot of uh, vehicle simulation uh, tools. So this is a multi-body dynamics model of a, a car doing a um, lane change maneuver or a slot, uh, yeah, well, yeah, lane change. And you can see how um, it's even indicating the magnitude of the forces that are at play uh, dynamically. So you can understand how uh, force and motion and how friction applies to each tire um, for vehicle dynamics. There's one more. This is the Cornell uh, self-balancing uh, bicycle project. So this is uh, bachelor students at Cornell. And they've been working on this project over some years, and it's actually now uh, a little spin-off company where they're trying to figure out some ways to maybe commercialize some of the ideas there called Wheel. Um, but that's a nice demonstration, and they start with a multi-body dynamics model to end up with this. And here is a was a commercial effort that ended up flopping, I think, but uh, nevertheless uh, interesting from multi-body dynamics perspective. Um, this is a self-balancing motorcycle that uses control moment gyros. Um, and they have a nice dynamic uh, principle that lets you apply torques along the roll axis of the vehicle um, just by moving the control moment gyros. So this is a demo vehicle. Um, and the idea is that you can 
you know, have a motorcycle where you don't have to put your feet down, basically. And we work on some similar things like this in the bike lab, too. Um, I've got a project tied to cargo bikes, and if anybody's looking for an MSC project, um, I'm looking for a student for that. And then the last demo is that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that it, these things can go down to the molecular level. Molecules are also governed by Newton's um, laws of motion. And you can simulate things uh, like um, molecule behavior. Um, they have different interesting forces at play than we see at the more macro level. Uh, but you can, um, each one of these are multi-body dynamics models that are based off the principles you'll learn in this class. Okay, those are the basic ideas. Um, you know, at the end of this, you're going to be able to write the math equations that can simulate systems like this. You're going to be able to understand um, the motion and how to interpret that. You're going to be able to write your own simulations, and you're going to have the basic fundamental principles so you can work with some of the tools that I've shown you. We're not going to teach you those tools, but you should be able to come in and know uh, the principles uh, for when you work with the higher level tools, but you also be able to write your own simulations from scratch yourself. All right, so the course resources, there's uh, three online places that you're going to go. We have a course website, Brightspace, and an online book. On the course website, you'll have the syllabus, uh, which gives a, uh, how the grading set, scales and etc. I'll show that. Schedule, um, I post all the lecture notes and video links there, so that's where you can find them weekly. Brightspace, I'll give you announcements to the class. We'll have a discussion forum for you to ask questions. Your homework will be found there under this system called Vocarium, and you'll also find your homework grades as we go along. And then I have an online book, uh, which is the materials that you should study before you come to the work sessions. And this um, is tied to a supporting book by Kane and Levinson called Dynamic Theory and Applications, which is a free download. So let's have a look at the course website briefly. I'll make that a little bigger. So I'll update this as we go along. I mean, the syllabus is uh, is fixed, and uh, we shouldn't see any changes there. You can read through the learning objectives and the details, our contact information for the instructors here if you need to email us or come find us. Um, the course for quarter three and quarter four, this is where it is and what time it is. Um, you will be able to work with partners and use materials to solve your homeworks, but you will have to make a contribution statement and be honest with us about where you got your resources from. So you'll learn more about that in the first homework. You should read through that. Here's the link to the textbooks and how to download the, the uh, Kane and Levinson book and then a couple of other resources. You're gonna be learning Python if you don't know it uh, already. We'll be using SymPy, NumPy, and SciPy to do, simul um, do the simulations and develop your things. Um, so a bit about that. Here's the grading policy, right? Um, and I'll touch on that a bit, but you should read that carefully. Uh, the pieces of Brightspace that we will use, and if you want to see the last year's course materials, you can find them at this bottom link. Probably most used will be the schedule page. I will post um, each week in this materials links to all of the elements, right? So these slides here that I just showed you will be here. Actually, they're already there. There's a notebook, um, which is the live Jupyter notebook that I may create during the lecture. There's online notes that are tied to that week, um, and uh, sometimes uh, handwritten notes too that I make during the lectures. You'll be able to download those, and each week I'll put new ones up. Um, there are, uh, I'll be using a mixture of new videos and old videos from last year, and we'll be updating the on online notes each week for you to improve the class. So the schedule, and then here's some more information about running the software, and we'll share a video too about how to uh, do and the details of executing your homework, and uh, if you want to install things on your own or find some more resources to help you get up to speed in programming with Python. That is all there on the course website. So bookmark that. And um, this website here, which you know, is linked on the syllabus, is the 
learning materials for the course. This first week you'll go through Jupyter and Python and SymPy. If you click each chapter here, you will find um, text mixed with code uh, that, and exercises that help you understand um, each topic for that week. Uh, you can download these at the top of each page as a Python file or a notebook, and you can execute the code yourself. You can play with it, you can edit it, and do what you want uh, with all the code pieces. And then, um, other than that, you're expected to uh, read this, and the, the primary materials of the course is this uh, online book here. And so you will be tested on the ideas there. And if I reference any specific ideas from the Kane and Levinson book or point you to a key reference, you can be tested on that too. So those are the materials. Um, I think I've been through that. Brightspace you should be familiar with, and uh, we won't use it um, heavily, but we'll use it for these topics here. Okay, next thing. So. Um, if you took the class last year, or you've heard about it uh, from your, your uh, um, schoolmates, uh, we're making a few changes uh, based on some of the feedback we got. Um, I hope to have a couple new lectures on energy and power and Lagrange's method. We've got a little a simpler weekly feedback form that I hope we can get more of you to participate in. Um, we've broken up the work sessions into three rooms so that we actually have tables and you can easily, more easily walk around. Um, we're working on more practice exercise and conceptual questions that are built into the homeworks and the online text. I've swapped the percentage of the exam and the homework, so the exam is worth more now, 60%, and the homework less. So um, you can you don't have to do the homeworks. You can, if you don't, you'll have an exam as 100%. Uh, but if you do do the homeworks, that can supplement your exam grade. We're going to work a lot on improving the exam and making that more manageable. And then uh, you're going to have to score at least a five, though, on the exam, even if you do the homeworks. Um, okay. So the last thing I want to show you is just a, a demo here, and you can l click this yourself and play with it. But uh, I wanted to give you a basic idea here of sort of what you will be able to do by the end of the class. So this I call uh, just a chaos pendulum. I've got a little free body diagram here. Uh, there is a pin joint at the top, a rod that has some mass and inertia, right? And then there's a pin joint here at this cylinder and a flat plate that also has mass and inertia. And the flat plate can rotate around the axis of the rod. And then the rod swings from a fixed ceiling. All right, so it's, made, it's a type of pendulum uh, that has axes in two different directions. And then we've got these uh, particular types of shapes. So. You're going to be working in Jupyter Notebooks, and that's what you're uh, looking at here. We're going to import Python code. We're probably going to be working with uh, SymPy here that does symbolic algebra, and then NumPy and SciPy that will help us simulate the system, and Matplotlib and some other tools to help us visualize uh, things. Excuse me. So. Um, I'll just go through briefly the basic steps, uh, and this is what you will be following. You're going to learn each step uh, as we progress through the course, and eventually you'll be able to simulate a whole multi-body dynamics system. Um, you First step, I guess, back to this, is you make your free body diagram. Second step, you uh, define carefully uh, all of your constants and your uh, motion variables. and uh, and you get to do that using SymPy. Um, you're going to define how different rigid bodies are oriented relative to each other. And here I've got a couple of basic axis rotations that I showed above. You have to define positions so you know how things translate and uh, are geometrically um, aligned with each other. We have to think about velocities. right? We have to tell uh, and define our inertias of the system. So um, we have both mass and the distribution of mass that we're going to have to manage for each body in the system. 
So here's an inertia matrix of the first body. You may recognize that as uh, uh, some simple terms for a rod, and then this is the ones that you might recognize for a cuboid, which is a rectangle with some thickness. Um, we'll think about the loads, the forces, and the torques that are applied uh, to the system. In this case, only we only have gravity. Once you have all of those pieces, you will be able to form the equations of motion. And this is the uh, first primary goal, is being able to get uh, the equations of motion. And these are based on the Newton and Euler um, equations of motion of, of, of a system. Newton is gave us that the time derivative of the linear momentum must equal the sum of all the forces acting on the system. And Euler gave us the equation that the time derivative of the angular momentum must equal the sum of all of the moments acting on the system. And we're going to formulate those equations. They end up being um, uh, some uh, high order uh, ordinary differential equations or differential uh, algebraic equations, depending on if you have constraints or not. And we can eventually get the equations of motion that tell us how this system will change in time. And this is uh, one form of those that you are seeing here. So these equations are not uh, too complicated. And uh, we'll see, though, so that some can be quite complicated as we move forward. And then finally, we will simulate the system. So then once we have a model, uh, and that's these equations of motion, we can then provide uh, information like uh, specific numerical values for the system, uh, initial conditions. We can do forward simulations in time, which solves the initial value problem of these differential equations. Um, or we can do other kinds of uh, numerical test. But here, I've simulated the system. And we can see that the angles have sinusoidal motion in this case. So we have the angle of the rod, and then the angle of the plate is a bit smaller here. So I've simulated that through time in 10 seconds. Uh, this thing uh, system is interesting in that it has some chaotic behavior. Most multi-body systems can, can likely have but chaotic behavior. You have to uh, find the right initial conditions to uh, cause that. Uh, but the pendulums are notorious for this. So we see the standard behavior, but if I slightly change the initial conditions, you can get some radical, uh, crazy motion. You know, and this is um, in degrees, so multiple rotations of the uh, plate now with slightly different initial conditions, and I change them slightly more, and I can get even a different behavior. So once we can simulate this through time, uh, we can finally do some visualization. So you will learn uh, how to do that. Uh, here is a 3D visualization of the plate. And I believe, I'm going to try to zoom in a bit and orient it a little. If I play this, oh, sorry, the blue is the down. It starts up. So it starts at the with the pendulum 90 degrees gravity is pointing downward along, along this blue line and then we let it swing and we can see after a few periods it starts to go uh, wild and we can visualize this chaotic behavior so this is a basic example of how you can start with a free body diagram define your model end up with equations of motion here. And then once you have those equation of motion, simulate and visualize the system so you can start to try to understand the motion. So this is the basic thing that you're going to be able to do at the end of the class. Um, you'll be able to simulate and understand different types of systems and some of the nuances about constraints. Um, and you'll learn some different methods of forming the equations of motion and how to extract kind of information that you might want from a system like this. OK, I believe that is what I've got for you for the intro. Um, we will see you in class on Monday. 
the, the Mondays are work sessions. You should have looked at the materials. Come and bring your laptop and you can pair up with a single partner to do your homeworks if you would like and you work on your homework there and we will have the instructors there there to answer questions and help you um, get going. Uh, the lectures though are all going to be delivered in a flipped fashion um, in these online videos and the, and the materials so come on Monday ready to work. Okay, see you all then. Bye-bye.